Rain hampers play on opening day as Durham struggle with the bat. Injury hit Worcestershire are still without key all-rounder Wayne Parnell and the pairs have slumped to seventh in the table. But with 29 points covering the bottom eight clubs in what looks like a scramble for one place, it is still comparatively early days yet. Improving Durham, who started this season with four straight defeats, stick with the side who stretched their unbeaten run to five games by beating Leicestershire. Worcestershire were hoping to make the most of overcast conditions as they elected to bowl first and home skipper Cameron Bancroft went on the attack in the first over. But that was the best of the opening period for Durham as Pennington would strike as he got rid of Aussie opener Bancroft for just eight. And then it was the Joe Leach show as he found two wickets and two deliveries, first trapping Hart LBW and then repeating the trick to send Burnham back to the pavilion for a golden duck. Graham Clark would survive the hat-trick ball. Durham bang in trouble and things got worse. Worcestershire seamer Charlie Morris bowling Alex Lees for a score of 12 to leave Durham four down for 38 runs. Wickets five and six came soon after. Ed Barnard would get in on the act as he saw the end of Pringle, the catch by Dell. And in the next over, Morris would claim his second wicket of the innings to see off Graham Clark caught behind. A rain break would come shortly after and something of a reprieve for Durham after a tough morning so far. The decision of an early lunch was a sensible one with the weather not improving. Durham 47 for 6 at lunch with the Worcestershire bowlers sharing the wickets around. Play didn't get underway until just after 3.15pm and it was up to batsman Rain and Eckersley to steady the ship. And they did that with some resilient batting and the occasional boundary. They were able to steer the hosts to 87 for 6 before bad light forced the players off and tea was taken. Durham fighting back with an unbeaten stand of 40 between Rain and Eckersley. The players would come out for a bit more play and Rain and Eckersley would continue on their merry way as they would bat through to the close of play. Again the rain would come and force an early finish. Not too much luck with Mother Nature today, but Durham have rallied somewhat after some tough early batting. They will be hoping that they can add some much needed runs tomorrow. Durham edging a close battle after day two. It was a rain-interrupted day yesterday at Chesterley Street as Durham played host to Worcestershire. After a poor start for Durham with the bat, they showed some resistance late in the day. After slumping to 47 for 6, they recovered to 122 for 6 by the end of the day, with Eckersley and Rain sharing an unbroken stand of 75 to drag them into the match. And they would continue on their merry way in the morning of day two, resolute batting with the odd boundary sprinkled in too. Both players were closing in on their respective half centuries and it was Eckersley who got there first with a single in the 50th over. But shortly after he was gone, the first wicket of the day falling and it was Barnard the bowler. The catch taken by Vessels but a valuable 115 run seventh wicket partnership for Durham. A few overs later, Rain would reach his 50 with a boundary, an important knock. Bryden Cass was in the middle too and he was able to find a couple of boundaries, but the last ball before lunch he was caught, Mitchell taking the catch and Whiteley the bowler, Durham losing their 8th wicket just before the break, but it had been a decent morning for the hosts, Durham 209 for 8. The Durham innings didn't last long into the afternoon though. In the third over after lunch, the last two wickets fell. Ed Barnard polishing off the innings with the two wickets in successive deliveries. First, Remington was caught behind by Cox. And lastly, Rushworth was gone for a golden duck as he was trapped LBW. It leaves Ben Rain unbeaten on 78 and Durham 212 all out. Worcestershire would open up the batting with Mitchell and Ferguson but Mitchell lasted only two balls before being sent back to the pavilion, LBW off the bowling of Rushworth. Vessels and Ferguson would hit some boundaries after that early wicket to recover slightly, but the second wicket fell in the 12th over. Ferguson trapped LBW off the bowling of Rain. Dell and Vessels would keep the score ticking along and move past the 50 mark. But the wickets were falling consistently and the third wicket came just after the 50 mark was reached. Vessels bowled by Hart for 33. Whiteley joined Dell in the middle and the pair found some boundaries with T looming. T 
Pepsi was reached with 72 for 3 on the scoreboard. And they added only five runs into the evening session before the fourth wicket fell, Rushworth trapping Dell LBW for 15 runs. The next over Whiteley was gone too, cast the bowler Eckersley taking the catch behind the stumps. The sixth wicket fell a few overs after that, Barnard skittling rain for seven, Worcestershire stumbling 94 for six. Cox and Dolivera wouldn't last long in the middle together as Remington found his first wicket of the innings. Dolivera bowled for five, Worcestershire seven down. Cox and Leach would decide that attack would be the best plan as they fired a few boundaries. But the eighth wicket would fall as Rushworth was trapped LBW off the bowling of Cox for 24 runs. The last two wickets would fall quickly as Rushworth would claim his fourth wicket to take out Leach LBW. And then Pennington went the next over as he was bowled by Rain Worcestershire all out for 151. Durham would have an awkward few overs to bat before the close of play and Bancroft and Lees were able to steer it through to stumps without any loss of wicket. 26 for no loss at the end of day two and Durham lead by 87 runs. The hosts well placed heading into day three but this match could go either way. Durham in commanding position after day three at Chesterla Street. Durham are in a strong position after day two of their Specsavers County Championship Division 2 clash against Worcestershire, holding an 87-run lead over the visitors at Emirates Riverside. The home side added 90 runs to their overnight total, courtesy of an unbeaten innings of 78 from Ben Rain and Rushworth was superb with the ball, claiming 4 for 28 as Worcestershire were dismissed for 151. Could Durham grab a tighter grip of this encounter on day three? Bancroft and Lees would start off the day in watchful fashion, whilst finding the odd boundary. But after the solid start to the day, they would lose their first wicket. Aussie Bancroft out for 28, caught by Cox off the bowling of Barnard. Durham had moved past the 50 mark in this innings though, and had Lees and Hart in the middle playing some nice strokes. Lees in particular was on the front foot as he moved on to 40 runs, but when he got to this score he would lose his wicket next, bowled by Pennington. Lunch was reached with the score 120 for 2 on a sunny day at Chesterler Street. Burnham and Hart at the crease would tick things along for a few more overs, but then another wicket would fall. Hart gone for 19 runs off 80 balls, bowled by Barnard, Durham three down in this second innings. Wickets four and five would fall in quick succession next. First Clark departed for six runs, Barnard picking up another. Then the next over Pringle was out LBW for just one run, Morris claiming the wicket. Burnham wasn't too bothered about the wickets falling at the other end as he was making good progress towards his half century. He would reach that milestone in the 68th over, his 50 coming off 91 balls. Burnham wasn't slowing down as he fired a flurry of boundaries off both Whiteley and Pennington. He would go on to hit a 6 off Whiteley, but in the same over he was gone, caught by Ferguson for a score of 76, entertaining batting. And with that, it was T, Durham 212 for 6, leading by 273 runs. Rain and Eckersley were proving a tough combination to remove as they played some watchful cricket. But shortly after the second inning score went past 250, the sixth wicket did indeed fall, and it was Leach who claimed his first wicket of the innings to bowl Rain for 28 runs. The next over, Eckersley was gone, bowled by Barnard this time, out for 33. Carson and Remington were given free reign to go on the front foot with a declaration looking likely. And Remington really opened up firing two fours and one six in one Morris over. And with those fireworks, Durham decided it would be a good time to declare and leave Worcestershire with an awkward spell to face before stumps on day three. They would begin their second innings trailing by 351 runs. And it wouldn't be a good start, Rushworth finding the first wicket just three overs in, skittling Mitchell for just one run. 
one wicket became two a couple of overs later. Again Rushworth doing the damage, this time removing vessels for a duck, not the start the Worcestershire were looking for. And there was no let up, as two overs later the third wicket fell. Rushworth was absolutely tearing through these early overs as he trapped Dell LBW. Ferguson and Whiteley would steer the innings through to stumps with the score at 31 for 3. Worcestershire have it all to do tomorrow as they require 321 more runs to chase down on day 4. Durham look in a good position, but a couple of good batting performances from the pairs could still swing this contest their way. Rushworth dazzles with the ball to finally see off resilient pairs. Three late Chris Rushworth wickets left Worcestershire in trouble at the end of day three and with a big job on their hands as the last day arrived. Durham, who lost their first four matches this season, will go third if they can wrap up victory and Derbyshire lose to North Ants at Chesterfield. And the batsmen would start on the front foot with both Ferguson and Whiteley finding early boundaries. But a few overs into the day and the fourth wicket did fall, Rushworth continuing his fine form as he bowled Whiteley for 18 runs. That brought Barnard to the middle and along with Ferguson the pair hit a couple of boundaries. Their partnership didn't last long though as Rushworth would be celebrating a brilliant fifer with the wicket of Ferguson. Cox and Barnard would look to build a solid partnership out in the middle though with both players playing expansive shots. Both players on the front foot and keeping the score ticking over, with Barnard hitting two boundaries and three balls off one heart over. This pair looking well set as lunch arrived, Worcestershire 139 for 5, Barnard on 42 and Cox on 40. Durham started quickly this morning but frustrated by this partnership of 83. The afternoon would see both players looking to reach their respective half centuries, but Barnard would fall short. Remington trapping him LBW for 43 runs, a crucial breakthrough. The next over though, Ben Cox was able to celebrate his 50. His half century coming off 87 balls, he would need to dig in to give Worcestershire any hope of surviving. A few overs later he was gone though, to leave the pairs 7 down and in big trouble. Cast the bowler, the catch taken by Pringle, Cox out for 62. Leach was next to go, again Cast doing the damage, Eckersley taking the catch behind the stumps, Durham two wickets from the win. Pennington would fall for seven runs to leave Worcestershire on the brink, Remington claiming his second wicket. But the fight wasn't over as Dolivera and last batsman Morris dug in and showcased some wonderful resilience. Surely they couldn't pull off a stunning turnaround. Alas, no they couldn't. Rushworth would complete his 10 wicket haul for the match as he uprooted the middle stump of Charlie Morris and Durham could celebrate now. Dolivera ending on 45 not out and the hosts winning by 109 runs to extend their unbeaten run to 6 and move up to 4th in Division 2. Thank you.